I told my story over a number of times to the farmers who were drinking coffee and waiting for the motor lorry from, from Zierest. And although the dozen odd men who were listening didn't say very much while I was talking, I could see they were listening to me in the same way they listened when Christian Lemmer talked. And everybody knows that Christian Lemmer is the biggest liar in the bushveld. To make matters worse, Christian Lemmer was there. And when I got to the part where the leopard lay down with me, Christian Lemmer winked at me. <laughs> you know that kind of wink. It does make you realize now there's a new understanding between us. And we can talk as one Marika liar to another. <laughs> I did not like that. Kerals, I said, <coughs> I know just what you're thinking. You don't believe me and you don't want to say so. No, but we do believe you. Christian Lemmer interrupted me. Many wonderful things have happened in the bushveld. Yes, I once had a 20-foot mamba I named Hans. He was so attached to me I couldn't go anywhere without him. <laughs> he even followed me to church on Sundays. And because he didn't care much for the sermons, Hans would wait outside under a tree. It was not that he was irreligious. It was just that he had a sensitive nature. And the strong line that Dumini took against the serpent in the Garden of Eden always made Hans feel awkward. Yet he wasn't standoffish like your leopard. He didn't choose a vitak to go and lie under. An ordinary thorn tree was good enough for Hans. He knew he was only a mamba and he didn't try to give himself airs. <laughs> of course, <clears throat> I took no notice of Christian Lemmer's stupid lies. But the upshot of it all was that I also started doubting the existence of the leopard. I recalled stories about human beings turning themselves into animals. Man, <clears throat> although I'm not a very superstitious man, I couldn't shake off the feeling that this was a spork thing that had happened. But when, a few days later, a huge leopard was spotted on the roadside near the port, and again by the Mtorsa on their way to Nietverdient, and again in the turflands of the Molopo, matters took a different turn. <laughs> At first, people jested about the leopard. They said it wasn't a, a real leopard, but a spotted animal that had walked out of Skalkalonis' dreams. <laughs> they said the people, the, the leopard had just come to this part of the Dwarsberger to have a look at Christian Lemmer's 20-foot mamba. <laughs> mm. but, <clears throat> but afterwards, when his spoor was spotted at several water holes, they had no more doubt about the leopard. <laughs> It was dangerous to walk about in the felt, people said. Exciting times followed. There was a, a great deal of shooting at the leopard and a great deal of running away. <laughs> the amount of Martini and Mauser fire in the Kranzes reminded me of nothing so much as the First Boer War. <laughs> and the amount of running away reminded me of nothing so much as the Second Boer War. But always the leopard escaped unharmed. Ha <laughs>